in this video, we're going to talk about making friends with Germans. Uh, to be honest, as a foreigner, it's a hard thing to do this. So we will touch topics as why I think it's hard. And Ivan will uh, give some insights as well. We will talk about uh, tips that will hopefully help you make some German friends. Hey, I'm Jen. And I'm Ivan. And we're from SimpleGermany.com, where we help expats settle into life in Germany more. Wait, are you subscribed? Ready? Smoothly. Smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> if you know that by now, I hope you did it with us. If not, then welcome to... The family. <laughs> Is that weird? The family? I don't know. Well, whatever. Anyway, so um, first we would like to start this video with some disclaimers. Yes. As um, always. As always, right? Like number one, we cannot generalize for all of Germany, right? Like we speak basically from our own experience and from our own perceptions. You, of course, are super sweet Germans and they're super not sweet Germans, but that goes the same for any culture. Yes. There are super sweet Guatemalans like myself and super <laughs> not sweet Guatemalans, right? Um, so we're not speaking for all of Germany. This is based on, like I said, what we have experienced. What we have experienced and I would say general perception, um, mm -hmm. also a conversation with friends and um, to broaden the topic a bit more, why are we even making this, 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 this video, right? And touching this topic. Um, there is this yearly a very interesting survey being done by the Internations. Um, and uh, for whatever reason, that's what we're going to discuss today, Germany always really mm. sucks in like two categories. Like Germany is amazing in, in, in economy and, and jobs and I don't know what and like really uh, all the reasons why you beautiful people are coming here. <laughs> um, but there are two categories where we seem not to really be good at. Yeah, Germany always is the last place almost, or one of the last places of uh, making friends <laughs> with locals, right? With uh, locals. And the second one? It's, it's general friendliness and the ease of settling ah, in. Ah, the ease of settling in, which I think it's very related to the making yes. friends, because if yeah. you don't know people, right, it's related. Well, the ease of settling also is the whole bureaucratic thing, right? Ah, I mean, this right. is pretty much why we exist, to make yes. it simpler. Yeah? yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so the second disclaimer that we have is that uh, making friends as an adult is hard. Yes. So that is a fact regardless of where you are. I exactly. Think. It's not um, a German thing. It's just an adult thing. Yeah, because like I, I, I like to compare it that as kids, we used to have the playground in school where we met pretty much all of our friends uh, there. But as an adult, you have work and playground. Is it the bar? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No. Or any other hobby that you have, right? <laughs> so basically, you need to recreate a social setting that is pretty much the playground for adults. Yes. And number three is that you can even maybe talk this a little bit more, but I've also heard from Germans that Germans find it hard to make friends with Germans. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Very detailed answer. So, <laughs> so let's first ask. So the question is what, what, what is, why do we think the question being like, why is it hard to make friends with Germans? And I think it boils down to a perception thing, right? Because first of all, in my perception, when I first got here, Germans are a little more distant. They seem colder. Um, they don't do chit chat and it seems that there are levels of friendship. Yes. Right. So yeah. maybe you can go into a little bit more detail why why you're so distant from others, I would say. Well, and again, I think this depends on who you're asking. Obviously, now we're hearing here the Latina perspective. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure if you would ask um, the, the Swedish, I was going to say the Scandinavian uh, countries, um, uh, there would be a different perception yes, again. Of course. Right. But again, the general perception is there. And I don't think we're distant and cold. We are just, um, we're not so much in, in your face, right? We mm. are, we, we respect privacy more. Um, so it's none of our business to be in your face while standing in line in a supermarket, for example. Mm. Like, mind your own business is kind of like the, the thing, right? Mm. But I would say with our friends, we're not cold at all. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's more of like boundaries. Um, and that's why we might be perceived as cold. Yeah. Hmm. Also, I think you've pointed that out and I've heard it a few times also in like other um, settings. Foreigners think we Germans stare. <laughs> and I must agree we do. And it's for me, if I can only speak for me personally, I like to look at people because I'm curious and I like to observe them. Um, it doesn't mean that I think they're weird or they're um, like I, I, I'm, I'm judging them or anything. Not at all. For me, it's a pure curiosity thing. So I'm actually very interested. But from the other perspective, obviously, when I it's stare like, why as a German, are you staring at me, right? Like, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> and you immediately think that I don't like you. Yeah, that's which true. Which yeah. is absolutely not the case. So it all comes down to perception. Again, yeah. And I, the the more I live here, the more I realize it's a perception thing. 
because obviously when you first land here and you want to, um, again, I have only Latin American culture to compare this to, right? And I think that is very unfair because Latin <laughs> Americans were like all over the place. Yeah, like we're like all super like giving all the time, right? Um, so when I compare it to that and, 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 and what I experience at home, like not, not at home, like in Guatemala, <laughs> um, it's super different, right? So perception wise, it seems so much harder. Just to give you an example, and this is for me where I, I really see a difference is I used to work in an office and I used to go every day to Reve to buy my lunch. Every day. Every day at the same time. And every day at the same time, there was this one person at the cashier. She wasn't super old, right? And for two years, she never acknowledged that I was the same person that she has been checking out for the past two years. It was always a Guten Tag, Dit Dit Dit, Pebekate, Schönen Tag, Tschüss. And because she's doing her job and minding her own business. She doesn't have time to chit-chat with every single person that comes there every single day. Right. Which then is, she wouldn't be efficient anymore. Yeah, efficiency. Maybe that's also the key, right? However, I've also seen in other supermarkets, uh, actually people chit-chatting the cashier all the time because maybe they're... <laughs> so it really depends on the person. Maybe they're the neighbors. Person. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe they're neighbors. Maybe yeah. have, they have a common ground, yeah. right? As in Guatemala, if this would be the case and I would go to the same place with the same person for two years, we would be like bros already, right? Like it would, we would chit-chat. We yeah, like and the people in line behind you would wait 10 minutes. Probably. <laughs> there you go. So, so this is, again, it's, it's a perception thing. I understand why, why the perception is there. Um, but I think there's a lot of misunderstanding in, mm. in, in what we actually mean with our behavior. Right. right? And I also heard from, from a German that it's also like a shy, not a shy thing, but like you said, privacy thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe when you interact with someone international, you're not going to upfront do a whole like small talk, chit chat, ask all kinds of questions. We also don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So there might be, again, a disconnection of what I expect you to be like and what you expect me to be like. Yeah. So that is kind of, this is the beauty of like um, cultural, uh, how do you say that, differences, differences. or yeah. <laughs> exchanges, because there you really see that happening, right? Yeah. And France, I would say it's a, it's a tough one to crack um, in any country, but in Germany specifically. We always compare Germans to coconuts. What well, you do. <laughs> I, I always compare Germans. Actually, German told me this once. We're like coconuts, you know, we're really hard on the outside. But once you crack it, we're like sweet. And, and, and the thing is that you get a friend for life. Yes. So I think we ran to a little bit of like the, 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 the cultural differences, which we cannot really pinpoint because, again, it's a very general yes. thing. But anyways, we can give you some tips, right, on... I was going to say, just, you know, don't think you're being judged on the opposite. Maybe the person is curious and maybe you make the first move. Mm -hmm. um, you know, also try, right? And, and you might get a really um, positive reactions and you might be like, oh, why are you talking to me? So <laughs> it's really, really individual. Yeah, I agree. Um, but anyways, we can give you some tips um, that we, um, we have... I would say we've used some of them, not all of them, but some tips to how you can actually meet the locals. At the end of the day, all of these tips will go down to, um, like I said previously, creating a, a common social setting. Hmm. Because you only meet people in terms of um, friendship or on, on the... In the, in the pay, you can pave the way to friendship um, through common interest. Right. right? We, we asked a friend, actually, uh, <laughs> recently we were talking about the how we were going to film this uh, video and asked her, like, you know, like, how, how do you make German friends? And she's like, it's easy. You just find a common reason or a common thing to complain about. <laughs> so, That's actually the number one tip. Uh, end of video. End of video. That's it. Just complain with Germans about a common thing and then you have friends for life. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyways, so for the real tips though, right? And that was a German, by the way, that said that, right? Yes. Yeah, just yeah. for full um, disclosure. Yes. <laughs> so obviously the most obvious tip I would say is if you're moving to Germany and you're working here, the number one place where you're going to meet other Germans is at work. Yes, right? it's in the office once we are back in the office. Once yeah. we're back. But even if you're not back in the office and if you join a company remotely, even actually uh, going like reaching out for like a virtual coffee or something like that might go a long way. Yeah. Because we don't have this... Um, coffee uh, how do you play this like the, the the where you go get a coffee like kitchenettes <laughs> that you can go hang out out right but there's a virtual one that you can create yeah, and, that's true. and reach out to 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 your coworkers and ask i for example have met um so i've worked in f multiple companies in one there was a mixture of internationals and germans and there i didn't really make any german friends um i made a lot of international friends uh then easier, i worked right? Yeah. Then I worked in a company that was just Germans and it was just me and another guy internationally. There I didn't meet any German friends. Um, also, the people there were a little bit different, I think, in common interests that we were talking about. And then I worked in a 100% German company and I was one of the few internationals. And funny enough, there I made tons of German friends. 
I mean, friends, yeah. Like, no, yeah, I would say I met uh, super good friends there. Yep. And in and, and comparison to all the other companies, people are very open and, and very interested, interested and yep. very um, also putting effort and asking me, do you want to go for a coffee? Do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to do this? Let's hang out after work. So, inviting you to inviting <laughs> inviting, <laughs> inviting you to to the houses yeah inviting yeah. me to birthday parties and stuff so again that's why i say we cannot generalize for everything it really depends finding this common interest with a person and making an effort and being open to learn about them yeah. uh, to being able to learn about their culture as well uh, as well as us teaching our culture in a but also way. respecting boundaries exactly yeah yeah so at work is the number one thing if you are here and you're not working then you have multiple options as well to do it So the one number two on our list is the fact that you can uh, join meet up. Join Facebook groups. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, join online communities, let's put it that way. Yeah, in the online communities, there we can actually bucket together Facebook groups. There's a website um, an app called Meetup that yes. uh, they now organize also virtual events. And there I must say also there's a lot of international expat meetups there. Um, however, leave your. I would. I would recommend to leave our expat bubble. Leave the expat bubble. Yeah. And, Otherwise, and, you'll have less chances of making German friends. Yeah. And actually, put put. I, I really enjoy when I put myself in a situation where I have to meet Germans, and I am in a situation where I have to also speak German, and and I'm in a German setting. Yeah. And that, for example, is again Facebook groups. There's not only Facebook groups for expats. But Facebook groups for newcomers in cities. And interest-based. For all the online communities, interest-based, right? Don't yeah. go to the expert groups, but go to the interest-based. Like if you're looking to play soccer, exactly. if you're looking to um, learn an instrument, if you're looking to uh, walk your dog, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um, interest groups. That's the number one real tip uh, we can give you. And there are some other un outside the online communities um, areas where you can find uh, interest groups in Germany with Germans mm -hmm. um, that we would like to uh, just tell you about because um, you will not hear about them in expat bubbles most, most often or not. So I spent most of my life in Germany without listening, knowing this word. And if I would have known this word before, I, I think I would have met so many more people. And that word is a Verein. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to join a sports club. And the way I searched for it everywhere was sports club, uh, like basketball club, and really no results. And I was like, how? I'm pretty sure people are hanging out and doing stuff. Um, and the magic word is Verein. Verein, exactly. That is our um, our social setting. Um, so for also in school, like we don't really have, um, like let's say in the US, for example, where the, the sports and the arts are part of school. Uh, in Germany, it's not that way. So in Germany, you have school, that's separate, and then in the afternoons, You do whatever you like to do, mm -hmm. and that's usually in a fine. Um, so um, start looking for them, um, um, join them. Usually there's a membership fee, like for um, for a year, mm -hmm. um, and there you have plenty of Germans, and there you already have common ground. Mm -hmm. And then it's really up to you to um, also, yeah, have the confidence to speak up and uh, introduce yourself and uh, try to get to know the others. Yeah, exactly. I have a really good friend, a Spanish friend, who joined the handball fine. And he loved it because A, he played the sport that he really enjoyed playing. Um, B, he met a lot of Germans who after their practice or games, they would hang out and have a couple of beers. Mm -hmm. And he was able to practice his German. And because he wanted also to speak German with them, they were so open to him. And he actually had a very good time. Yep. They would invite him to parties and, and everything. So yeah, so that was pretty good. Another typical thing in Germany is the Stammtisch. Ah, yes. Which I have personally never been to a Stammtisch. Have you? Not in that traditional sense, because I was always in a fine. Right. Yeah, but a Stammtisch um, is a, a more, even more social, but very, very, um, how do you say? Um, official. No. Official and Or repetitive. Regular. regular. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Exactly. It's pretty much, uh, again, about a topic. And then you meet same day, same place, um, same time um, on a weekly or bi-weekly or monthly basis hmm. uh, and talk, discuss this topic. So it's less of a physical or RC thing is more of a discussion thing um, that can be in the in the in the restaurant around the corner and the bar around the corner and the park around the corner whichever it is um, but you can also look for this word Stammtisch um, with a thing that you like to do yeah or just Stammtisch in your city and then see what's available yeah. right um, another thing that I have here is actually when you want to take a learning new skill or take a course or whatever there are two options for that you can go to the Volk Volkshochschule mm -hmm. which is um, <clears throat> actually uh, 
So what is the focus? It's community school, pretty much. It's a community school, yeah. which they actually provide really good courses for very little. It's relatively cheap. It's also a perfect place to meet people. And if you don't want to go to the community school, you can always get private lessons for or join a group to learn a certain skill, as we mentioned, right? Yeah. Again, find that base of, of, of interest with others. Um, and the other one that we have here, which goes into the same, is to volunteer. Um, you can always volunteer. Like we have a friend and he went to volunteer to pick up trash with two German guys and they had the time of his life. Yes. <laughs> they actually took a Bollerwagen with some alcohol and they ended up partying. Um, and through that he met two German uh, guys. Yeah, it wasn't partying. It was more like really experiencing the German culture combined with a social thing that you do. Yeah. Um, volunteering in German means uh, Ehrenamt or Ehrenamtlich. So you can also, also look for that hmm. um, because volunteering might not be the same as club in Verein. Yeah, um, very good the, point. The same thing, yeah. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, um, it's also about patience. Yes. <laughs> yes, I was going to just talk, to, uh, to talk about that right now because, okay, now you have ways to meet Germans and then you go there and then you're like, okay, but I don't have any friends after like a week. <laughs> and it's a patient game, right? Yes. First, you need to, I like to, I don't know, I've, I've noticed that Germans have like levels of friendship. Yes. So you first become kind of like schnuppe each other. Do you, can you even say that? You like, like, like. Go schnuppern, yeah. Yeah, you, you kind of like see if you like that person. Then maybe you talk a little bit more. Then maybe you become an acquaintance. After an acquaintance, it might take a few months. And then maybe you go for a beer together. And then after that, um, it takes a few months. And then maybe at some point you beat that threshold yes. to be friends. Yes, so it's, it's a process, it takes a lot of time, and that's what Jen said in the beginning, not just for international with Germans, but also German with Germans. Um, since I've been abroad and I came back, um, for me it is exactly the same thing that, 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 that you're describing. It's very hard to make real friends, hmm. um, because my perception is different, because I'm no longer 100% German, I'm not 100% foreign, I'm like this, this mix. Um, <laughs> and it also is very hard for me, um, or other Germans for that matter. Um, and it's being patient and really also seeing, do we really get along, right? For a German, we much rather have a handful of really good hmm. friends than 10 hands full of acquaintances and um, like, Ooh, who has the, the wedding with the most people? No, mm. it's rather who has the, um, yeah, the closest friends that you can really talk, uh, talk really also um, private topics about. Hmm. I think that's a big changer. So when would you consider someone your friend? Well, I would say there are levels of friends, right? And we also use different words. Mm -hmm. So there is um, ein Freund, eine Freundin. Mm -hmm. There is ein guter Freund, there is ein, ein sehr guter Freund, there is mein bester Freund, everything also with Freundin, yeah? Um, not not uh, genderizing here. Um, <laughs> and so we really put different labels on it. But so when you ask me what is a friend, um, a friend is someone that is interested in my life, that I am interested in, in their life. And we can um, really also talk about um, not so pretty things. It's not just always, oh, what did you do? And how was your day? And just, just showing the Instagram style of life, right? The, the pretty pictures and all that's good. But also being able to talk about the parts that are not good. Hmm. Yeah, and so it's a trust thing. It all boils down to trust. And to get the trust of someone, especially of a German, takes time. But once you have it... You really need to up to lose it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that is pretty interesting. And uh, to that note, because it's a trust thing, and I think like uh, from my Latin American culture, right? Like we, our word is not really binding, I would say, right? Like I'm invited to a party. This was pre-Germany time for me, right? Invited to a party, yes, I'll come. Invited to a party the same day, yes, I'll also come. Invited to a party the same day for another, yes, I'll come. And so suddenly I have like three events on that day and I'm like, hmm, I can't go to all three, obviously, but I said three to all of them. And I just pick one and I go to that one. But that's like a no-go in Germany. And I would say in Germany, when you give a yes and your word, it's expected that you're going to fulfill it. Yes. So if someone invites you to a party, if a German reaches out to you and invites you to something, if you say yes, make sure that you can make it. Don't just say yes with, oh, I didn't check my calendar, whatever. I'll just Make say sure yes. you can make it. Don't come empty-handed. Like hmm. contribute somehow. Um, you know, it's very common in Germany also that you have like like social gatherings where everyone brings uh, some sort of food. Hmm. Um, so everyone brings a little bit. But even if that's not the case, bring something. Bring uh, a bottle of wine. Bring flowers. Bring whatever this person likes. Um, because coming, especially if it's like the first or second time, empty-handed, 
is not a good impression. Oh, there you go. Um, and it's all about sincerity. Um, it's uh, especially in the beginning stages when uh, you do the the yeah, when you <laughs> when you, you see you if you see can if you, see if if you, you can like if you can get along. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say we. I mean, I personally, and I'd say I'm not the only person here in, in Germany. Um, I think I've said that in a previous video already. Uh, sincerity, um, a trust, and really authentic, uh, authenticism of, of, is yeah. super important. If I can sense that um, you are just putting up a face, a persona, a smile, um, you know, for whatever reason, uh, it's I would never ever mm. uh, engage in in a, in a longer um, conversation or or friendship, if you want to call it. Um, so it's all about being who you are, really. It's, it's this whole being direct and uh, not faking thing that it always comes down to. Yeah, at, yeah, of course. Um, and of course, I would say we haven't mentioned this, but it's uh, kind of needless to say, but it's a very big important also making friends in Germany is you have to learn German. Helps, um, yes. It helps a lot. Um, again, you don't have to speak C1 super fluent level. <laughs> no. But uh, the fact that you can speak some German and you try to speak some German with these friends that you have, it really goes a long way. So if I look back, at, I told you I worked at different companies at different stages. At the very beginning, obviously, my German was super horrible. Second one was okay but not good enough. But in the last company where I actually made friends, I spoke more German. They knew I spoke more German. And I just feel that broke the ice a little bit more. You were included more. I was included more and it broke just the ice a little bit more with conversations and stuff. And it's like, ah, oh, Jen. And, and we wouldn't always speak German. Like they would know that I speak German, but I would be included. And at some point we would switch to English inevitably, uh, or if the topic was too complicated and that was uh, okay. But I really do think that when speaking German, obviously speaking the language of this place where you live in, it's a big, big uh, step to integrating into that culture and understanding it. So it's also high up in the list. And I would say a B1, B2 is very good to, yeah. to, to, to have a conversational uh, level of German. And it just works magic, I would say. Yeah. Yep. And then again, uh, also, you're not supposed to be friends with everyone, right? Even right. in your own culture, there are people you like and there are people you don't, you don't like. like. So yeah. um, also, like, don't push too hard, really sense for yourself. And if you have the feeling, ah, oh, that's someone, you know, that uh, you think matches, just speak up also. And, and um, even if it's awkward, uh, and just be like, hey, um, I, I think we could be friends. Do you want to um, have out. a coffee, yeah, have a or, beer or, or whatsoever? Yeah. And the person will be like, mm, okay, well, uh, <laughs> and then you see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I would say like for me personally, I've been able to glimpse a little bit into the friendships in Germany because of you, obviously, because you're German and you have German friends. And I would say that once you're into this circle, um, you can be very sweet and very yes. giving and very warm, and warm and very honest. And, 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 and you talk about real things in life. And very supporting. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So I do agree that once you find a German friend, you find one for life. And the few ones that I have, yeah, I think we'll be friends for life. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So that's pretty cool. So again, we wish you all the best of luck out there to find your German friends. Uh, <laughs> it's not impossible. It is definitely worth the wait, the patience. And remember, be open, be patient, and just making and friends. And don't think you're being judged. Yeah. And just yeah. making friends is sometimes rough. doesn't have to be generally just because it's a German person. Exactly. Yeah. So... Yeah. If you we like hope uh, we yeah, were able to give you some insights. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this got a little like deeper and sentimental uh, than, yeah. we, than we thought, <laughs> thought actually. Yeah. Um, but anyways, this is also important to talk about. Yeah. So now you can do your whole speech. Oh, now the speech is if you like this video, <laughs> make sure to hit that like button. Liking this button will allow YouTube to spread the video more and other people can find us. So uh, if you want to, that's kind of like your way of sharing. Uh, simple Germany with others. Also hit that subscribe uh, button if you haven't already. And we also set up a coffee page if you would like to support simplegermany.com. Pretty much you can buy, you can donate the equivalent of buying us a coffee, which pretty much will allow us to create better content, not better content, but more, more content. More and better content. Both, yeah, yeah, more and better content yeah. for, for you so we can help people settle into life in Germany. More smoothly. More smoothly. Ah. <laughs> so until next Monday, uh, yeah. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers.